So the Oscar nominees came out yesterday. We thought it'd be a good idea to talk about it, go through some of the top categories and give our thoughts on the picks and who we think out of the nominees for those categories that we think should win. Movies are dreams that you never forget. It's the most magical place in the world. We're not going to go through every single category because there's a fucking million of them. Uh, so we're just going to do like... Team design. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> Marvin, who do you think is going to win for costume design? I mean, listen. Everything, all, all at once. <laughs> all of these people are brilliant at their craft. Yeah. Crew members, makeup, hairstyling, uh, people who do the score, the sound design. All those people deserve credit for their craft. Yeah. Personally, yeah. I think awards like this are fucking stupid. I think it's just a popularity <laughs> contest. However, I do understand and support the notion of an actor or person who works on these movies of wanting the... I, 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 it's obviously nice to get the recognition of your peers, right? Yeah. I get all that. But I largely think these award shows are fucking stupid and shit. That being said, <laughs> let's go over... Some of these categories, I'm going to start, I'm going to go in the order that they usually like announce the awards during the ceremony. And I think it's like the top five or something. So let's start with best supporting actress. Our nominees are Angela Bassett for Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Hong Chow mm -hmm. for The Whale, Carrie Condon, Banshees of Inner and Jamie Lee Curtis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Stephanie Su for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Ooh. Tough category already. Now, Personally, I've seen three close. out of four of these movies. I haven't seen The Whale yet, so unfortunately I can't speak on Han Chao. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a movie that we will be reviewing when we are able to do so, uh, but haven't watched it yet. Uh, man, all of these actresses were great. I think Jamie Lee Curtis was fantastic in Everything Everywhere All at Once. Yeah. And as you guys know, and anybody who watches the channel knows, she holds a special place in my heart. Yeah. Uh, so I would love to see her win. Stephanie Sue was the daughter from Everything Everywhere All at Once. I thought she was great as like the villain of the movie. She, re she was really yes. good. Yeah. Uh, Carrie Condon was great in Banshees of Inner We just reviewed yep. that movie last week. So that's fresh in my head. And she was one of, I mean, the everybody in that movie. movie was great. She was great yeah. in it. And fucking Angela Bassett fucking just crushed it as Queen Ramonda yeah. in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. This is a tough choice for me. Out of the four, though, who man, I think I gotta. Uh, this is tough, but I gotta give it to my girl Jamie Lee. Mm, okay. How about you, Marvin? It's close, dude. Um, I I think I would have to give it. I can't do an either or. Right? I have to just pick one. Uh, yep. Tough I'm gonna do. That. I'm gonna do Stephanie Sue. Well, then I'm gonna split because I think you were gonna go Angela Bassett. I was. That okay. monologue, yeah. 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 All right. So that I'll split it. She, she it. actually got it, I believe, in the Critics' Choice Award. She got Best wow. Supporting Actress. For yeah. Best it, so. Yeah. You're giving it to Angela Bassett? Yeah, because he was he he was split. He gave it to Stephanie. I was going to go whichever way he didn't go. Okay. <laughs> Fair knew. enough. Spread it around. Just as a knower. And these are yeah. hard because, like, every it's one hard. of them yes. were great. Right. This pro this might be the closest. I, I I looked at the categories before. Yeah, Th these might be the closest out of the rest of the categories. To be honest. Okay, uh, I haven't looked at this the first time. I'm looking at them. So. Oh, okay. Next, we're up to best supporting actor. We got Brendan Gleeson from The Banshees of Inisherin, Brian Tyree Henry from Causeway. I have not seen that yet. No. Uh, Judd Hirsch from The Fablemans. I have not seen that yet, and I'm looking forward nope. to watching it. Barry Keegan from The Banshees of Inisherin and my boy Key Kwan from Everything Everywhere All at Once. Uh, it's a very close one. Again, I'm sure Judd Hirsch and Brian Tyree Henry were great in those respective roles. Um, <laughs> Brendan Gleeson was great in Banshees of Inisherin. And between Barry Keegan and Key Kwan, uh, it's such a hard choice, but I got to give it to Key Kwan because I think he crushed it. And the whole, you know, sur everything surrounding everything everywhere all at once and the cast and, and just the role and what it meant to him after 30 years out of the business. I think I got to give it to him. He crushed it. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> this, this is not even fair because of how good Quan was Yeah, in everything everywhere. Yep. Uh, I thought Barry was amazing as Dominic. He really was. 
Um, I said in our review, go check it out, yep. that he killed it. Uh, his story was the, the true tragedy in that movie, but yeah. I think Quan was just too solid. Yep, uh, I'd have to give it to Quan too. There are right. only. It's just unfortunate because it's like. Yeah, it's tough. Hard <laughs> choice. It's like picking which kid is this your like favorite. A fi- this is like a 51 49 decision. Yeah, like. yeah it's <laughs> close. So we all picked Kihi Kwan, so okay. congrats to him. If yeah. Kihi Kwan Congrats was, him. <laughs> if Kee Kwan and Barry Keegan were both drowning, which one would you say? <laughs> Ooh. So you guys know I'm a famous crier, right? Doesn't yes. take much mm-hmm. to give me that choke in my throat, but oh yeah, I literally like I can't even like think about. <laughs> I'm gonna get choked up right now. <laughs> I can't even think about Captain uh, C- Cap dancing with Peggy at the end of Endgame without getting mm-hmm. choked up. But the new thing that is of equal choke uppiness is the line from everything everywhere all at once they're in that alternate universe where she's like the rich and famous movie star and mm-hmm. he's like some random guy and he says in another life i would have re- oh my god i can't even say it in another <laughs> life i would have loved just doing laundry and taxes with you oh, right. oh yep. my god <laughs> God, I love him. (laughs) He's good. Such a fucking good movie. All right, on to the next category. Best lead actress. By default, Michelle Yeoh wins. Um, but I think she was great in the movie too. And again, for the same reasons as Key Kwan, I think she deserves this this win as well. Uh Kate Blanchett ahead. turns in a pretty good performance in Tar. It's an interesting movie, uh, but it's not anywhere near Michelle Yeoh. I mean, she's always like, great. Like she killed it in everything everywhere all at once. So definitely uh, of the two movies I've seen, I still give it to Michelle. Margaret? I haven't seen anything but everything everywhere. Even if okay. I've seen these other movies, I would I'm like 95% sure I would still give it to well, Michelle. I mean, she was amazing in the role. And also, again, part of what makes this movie so special is everybody's individual story of how special yeah. the movie was to them. And hers is that she's been in Hollywood for like, you know, fucking 40 years or however long. And she's a brilliant martial artist. She's a great actress. And she's never really been given the respect or recognition that she deserves outside of her niche of like martial arts. Right. And this movie... What? what you Nothing. I just love her and her martial arts. Oh movies. yeah, I mean no, I, she's I'm, no, she is she's fantastic. She's a revered actor. Yes. Yeah, fantastic. But in terms of like, all, like you know, in the greater Hollywood, she has said like this is the 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 role of a lifetime for her to really show her range. Even in, she said in an interview, she's always gets to play like these like side characters, like I'm Shang Chi's aunt or I'm this person's grandma or whatever the fucking case is. This is her movie. This is her and Ki Kwan's movie. And she gets to show her role, her range. She could she's she could do drama, she could do comedy, she could do action. So mm. I think she deserves it. Uh best lead Maybe. actor. We got Austin Butler in Elvis as Elvis, Colin Farrell in the Banshees of Inishirin, Brendan Fraser from The Whale, Paul Mescal from After Sun, and Bill Nye from Living. Given that this is the only the only movie I've seen, I have to give it to Colin <laughs> Farrell. But to be honest, yeah, we're all was, in the same boat here. Yeah, yeah. He was amazing in that movie. In he Banshees. was. He yeah. was. Uh, but based on the trailers and some of the clips Played that a I've great seen, dullard. Well, I think this will probably be Brendan Fraser's win, just because. Yeah. So. Uh, all the clips I'm seeing of him in that role, like. Complete I'm transformation. I'm pretty sure he took it in the Critics' Choice Awards. Yeah. Well. yeah. I need to know that I have done one thing right with my life. It was more like a trending contest. Like, whoever, it feels like whoever's trending the most. Yeah. Is, Nowadays, I don't know, it's like a weird, media. It's like a weird, like, hive mind thing. <laughs> like, whoever everyone thinks is going to win usually is just going to win. Generally, well, but... I mean, and I, but you the the people though, like we're talking about, like Brennan Fraser and Kihi Kwan. These are amazing people. Yes, from what you hear and read about, mm-hmm. they're not like these asshole, uh, snooty Hollywoods, right? Like they're just wonderful people. The Hollywood elite. 
That's so true. when when they take a chance on a movie and it fucking kills, yeah, they, yeah. it's usually easy to get on that bandwagon. For Whereas sure. like in past years, yeah, I could see like somebody, oh my god, somebody was so wonderful that, and we're we're like yeah. that, yeah. Best director Martin McDonough for The Banshees of Inisherin, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinert, Scheinert. I don't know how to say that. So the Daniels, Scheinert. everything, everywhere, all at yeah. once. Scheinert, Steven Spielberg for The Fablemans. Todd Field for Tar and Ruben Osland for Ostland for a Triangle of Sadness. Oh man, I don't want to fucking suck his <laughs> dick too hard, but I think I got to give it to the Daniels. Everything, everywhere, oh, all at once is just such shit. a fucking good movie. Yeah, uh, I think I might actually give it to Banshees. Uh, real quick, just to be honest, just to say before uh, Dusty, give your pick. I'll talk about it after. Uh, I would give it to the the Daniels. I liked that movie better than Banshees. Overall, yeah. Banshees is a great movie. It's a beautiful movie. It's obviously beautifully shot, beautifully acted, beautifully directed. Yeah. My thing is, is that out of the two films, Everything Everywhere All at Once is the type of movie that could have easily been bad and terrible. In fact, I think it also no, required far true. more actual direction. Everything Everywhere All at Once is such a creative story yes. and creative true. movie, and it's all over the place. That type of movie it's could easy. very easily go off the rails. To lose control. Yeah, you're right. I think I actually want to change it now. Okay. Putting it, putting it more into perspective. Um, A mind yeah. has been changed here today, folks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On to best picture. The big kahuna. Oh, shit. We got All Quiet on the Western Front. Oh. Uh, we've got Avatar, The Way of Water, Banshees of Inishirin, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick is on there. That's a fucking shocker to me. That is a huge shocker. Triangle of Sadness and Women Talking. I mean, listen. <laughs> this one is a clear winner. Out of these movies, <laughs> I, I, I gotta say, I don't, I, I absolutely do not give a fuck about Avatar. <laughs> I don't, like, I'm not gonna sit here and tell people they're stupid for wanting to go see it. I'm sure it looks amazing. I'm sure it's a great movie, and I'm not gonna be like, "Oh, it's fucking Pocahontas." Shut the I don't care. It's I just funny. You know, it's funny. Like I was talking to Vince about this because he saw it, and he said, "Shout out to Vince." Shout out Vince. He said, uh, "I asked him, was it a good movie or was it just visually good?" And he said, "The movie was okay. That was it. The movie was okay. It still and, made two billion dollars." Well, I say this to say he said. Something along the lines of, well, you don't go, you go to see a movie to see the movie. You don't, you're not there hundred percent for the story, which I understand that. Uh, I disagree with that. Well, but it's, well, my point was, it's relative. Even, even if the story is only, let's say 50% of your opinion of the movie, that's a pretty big chunk. Like if the story is shit, but it is visually good, that movie is a five out of 10. Well, I mean, that's like blockbuster action movies. Like, we, we, we haven't talked about Top Gun Maverick, but we did talk about Top Gun and Make Marvel Watch. The, the actual plot of that is pretty thin. Yeah. But it's like the action and the uh, montages and everything else that makes that movie work. The music. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's all relative to what you're going to watch in a movie. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, so back to our topic of Best Picture. Yeah. No, I'm giving this really. to everything, everywhere, all at once. I'm right there with you. Got to do it. It's just going to clean house. I think it's going to clean house. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, I just I feel bad for Banshees. I just feel really yeah. bad for Banshees because I love that movie. Listen, Banshees uh, Maverick, is a great movie. Maverick was a great, a great sequel as well. So You know, I'm also surprised that the unbearable weight of massive talent isn't getting love on any of these categories. I thought that was a great movie, honestly. It's probably my second favorite movie of the year. We're gonna have a video where we talk about the best movie, our favorite movies that we've watched this year. But, yep. but a uh, little spoiler, <clears throat> that's like my second favorite movie that I've seen this year. I thought it was fucking hilarious. I thought it was smartly written. I thought it was gr uh, brilliantly acted from Nick Cage and Pedro. I'm surprised it's not coming up on any of these fucking lists here. Yeah, I, I mean, you mean Halloween like Ends wasn't your. Cage Second favorite movie. Yeah, <laughs> feels like Nicolas Cage doesn't always get the credit he deserves because of some of the cheese. Well, that's why that movie was so good, though. <laughs> that's the thing about it, you know. Right. And and you know what, too, 
I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, this is gonna be. Is, I'm come. This is gonna be a hot, hot button subject right now. But I think that fucking our boy Daniel Radcliffe deserves a little bit of a nod for his his portrayal of Weird Al. Weird Al, absolutely. I thought he was fucking great in that movie. See, mm-hmm. this is why the Oscars are bullshit. Okay, <laughs> no, I'm being dead serious, and this is why I yeah. say like Oscar bait. It's like a thing because a yeah. movie that has fucking you know, a million actors in it is always going to get more recognition than a fucking weird comedy like Weird Al. But that movie was fucking yeah. hilarious. And it was... But but Amsterdam was the Oscar Bay and they got nothing. Yeah. Willy yeah. Wonka voice. Well, well that's why yeah. I said, the, I, I don't know what the deal is with that movie, but the critics seemed, didn't seem to be, didn't, didn't yeah. seem to care for it. I right. disagreed in our review of it. Um, mm-hmm. Again, listen, I'm sure all these movies are great, but like you have Top Gun on here. <laughs> randomly you haven't seen it so i'm not saying it's bad i i'm sure it's great but best picture nomination all right sure yeah it's amazing but okay i'm sure i it would is. give it a nod but if, I, if you had to make me pick no, um what... like five movies that i've watched this year ah, top gun it, definitely makes but hang top on. gun definitely makes the list yeah but, but of a nomination all right but you know what dan is saying it's like a certain theme and it doesn't seem like right my point Maverick fits that theme of normal action Oscar movies noms. Action movies, comedies, um, rom-coms, uh, Marvel films. Like, you don't really generally see those types of movies in these award shows, right? Other than, like, CGI, special effects, costume design, shit like that, right? Yeah. If, if Top Gun Maverick could be nominated for Best Picture, why can't Daniel Radcliffe be nominated for Best Actor? Give him a nom. He doesn't have to win. Just a nom. One last thing before we wrap it up. I just want to give a little shout out to our boy. You mentioned it on the podcast in your news segment uh, that John Williams is once again nominated for Best Original Score for the Fablemans at like 96 goat. years old. So, uh, the goat. The Another goat himself. One. And he'll probably He's like win. 92. He's not 96, is he? He's I don't know. He's like 91 <laughs> or 92. While we're on the subject of Best Original Score, Everything Everywhere All at Once is also nominated. Uh, the Banshees of Inishirin is nominated. Uh, Babylon and All Quiet on the Western Front for original score. So, yes. all right. I love so, a good music score. Yeah, there you have it, folks. Do you guys listen to music soundtracks that much? You know, Not really. Every now, every now and then, really. if I need to get a little bit of a pump up for the day, I'll listen to uh, oh, yeah. John Williams' Superman score. But nice. that's about it. I also am quite fond of the Captain America score from the original movie, the first movie. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, the one thing, you know, Marvel doesn't usually have, I mean, they have like, good scores but not ones that are timeless i think Mm. captain america is one that is right uh there you have it folks there's our thoughts on some of the top uh nominations at this year's oscars leave a comment down below let us know what you think uh if you agree with the choices uh tell us what your choices are for the categories we've covered Uh, if you have not done so already and you like the video consider subscribing leave a like and you could click on that playlist over there to see some of the other pop culture stories that we've covered in the past. And we will catch you in the next video. See ya. Asta.